Hey there, so this is a video to talk about how to support somebody that is going through a divorce. So first things first is the person that you're supporting going through this, they're actually going through a traumatic experience at the moment. Divorce, although it's not classed as a trauma by the DSM-5, it is most certainly creating a traumatic response for most people that go through it. It meets a lot of the criteria. In other words, it's a, it's a total shock to the autonomic nervous system. In some cases, it can produce an identity crisis for that person. And the problem with, with divorce is it can produce a shame response as well. So we class it as a shame-based traumatic identity crisis. And that can really make that person's world kind of fall apart. Um, and the biggest thing they need from you as the person supporting them is reassurance. Reassurance, firstly, that more than 50% of the world have kind of experienced at least one divorce, which is a fact. Um, as you walk down the road, you probably find that most people have had a failure to a relationship. So normalizing that failure could really assist that person to not feel so ostracized and isolated by what they've just been through. The second thing is to kind of talk to them about and reassure them of your role in their lives and that you know you're there for them and if they need anything you're here to talk and rehash the story because sometimes they're grappling to understand what has happened and and they will need to kind of rehash that story over and over again until they can get to a place where they feel a bit more clarity of exactly how this has happened being the person that can just contain that rewinding of the tape and playing it over and over again can be really cathartic for that person. And the other thing you can do is not to try to rush them in getting over this too quickly or to put pressure that they need to immediately start dating and immediately like start to put themselves back out there because their response will be their response and they, they might need a little bit more time. The shock reaction that a lot of people experience when they go through this type of trauma can be really acute. Some people can suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder like tendencies following something like this. So having that patience with them and giving them the space and the comfort that you're somebody that they can safely fall apart with would be the most supportive thing that you can do. Um, what a lot of my clients report is just feeling completely abandoned and isolated. It's almost like because this is a topic that feels shameful and it involves the failure of a relationship and people kind of cringe a little bit around this. It's a little bit like they feel like they have a scarlet letter D on their chest, like they've contracted HIV. It's like they're dirty or unclean now. That's what a lot of people report feeling when they're going through this and you normalizing it, saying it's all okay and like, um, you know, that it's going to be okay is really, really supportive and helpful. The other thing is not to use the platitudes. Don't say, there's lots of fish in the sea. Don't worry, we didn't like that person anyway. Oh yeah, good riddance. Um, you know, he was a bit blah, blah, blah. Don't trash talk because in some cases you don't know how this is going to turn out. They might end up getting back together and then you're going to have egg on your face. They might take a lot longer to kind of unravel the stuff and being that um, impartial person where they can just be contained and fall apart a little bit it's it's the most helpful position to take the other thing that's key is that because this is a traumatic response is understanding that that their whole autonomic nervous system is going to be dysregulated that means they could have a sympathetic nervous response like fight or flight mechanism can kick in really anxious really angry and that can kind of be quite challenging to be around. And for a lot of people that don't like conflict, it can be, you know, trying to placate that and squash it and like, you know, don't be angry, don't be this, don't be that. Not helpful. Um, you know, particularly if you're in, a, in, in the spirit of wanting to avoid conflict, doesn't necessarily mean that that is akin to what that person is going through. They're having that sympathetic nervous response and they probably need that. So leaning into it a bit and kind of helping is the best way. So it's like, look, I really get that you're really angry right now. Why don't we um, go and get some bags of ice and a baseball bat and go and beat the living hell out of that thing and you're probably gonna feel a lot better. Or why don't we go chop some wood or 
why don't we go out and go and do something really angry. Let's go play angry squash or let's do some angry baking. Let's really lean into that feeling and show me how angry you can get. So leaning into it as opposed to trying to squash it or we'll put it into a box where they feel even shamed by their emotional response, not helpful. Whereas the latter is leaning into it and kind of like indulging them a little bit can make them feel better. The next thing is if they're in the massive fight or flight on the nervous end of the spectrum and they're having a panic attack or anxiety attack, comfort, a big hug, or, you know, let's just stand here, let's just like really shake it out, like helping them again to kind of shake out that nervous response helpful okay if they're having an autonomic nervous response where they've moved into dorsal vagal that's where they are frozen dissociated cannot get out of bed they they're just completely and utterly destroyed and dissociating in the face of this what that needs is intervention so if you're a person supporting that it's like going over to their house knocking on the door getting through there like hey it's gonna be okay come let's go for a walk you just want some movement so in that frozen space, we need some action and some movement to pull them out of that initial space that they're in. So getting them out of bed, let's go for a walk, let's just go for a coffee. Um, just starting to get them to talk about what's happened, just trying to get them to eat something, trying to get some you know, um, normalization into their, pro into their program. What we do with, with people is, um, stabilize and, and cocoon in the first step to get them moving get them out of bed get them showering get them dressing get them you know eating properly three meals a day sitting at the table um, you know uh, cooking the food kneading the dough you know having a participation in the activity and getting that kind of routine back in action you know um, if they're a woman putting on some makeup you know putting on some good clothes, you know, uh, just that kind of basic hygiene stuff can be helpful. Exercise is helpful, like, hey, let's go for a walk together, let's go for a run together. Um, if they're in that active fight or flight space, great, let's do something really active and, and hardcore together. But if they're in that very depressed, dark space, going for a walk together and comforting and pulling them out of themselves a little bit. Again, don't shame their reaction. Just go, yeah, it's really okay that you're feeling like this, but I'm here to intervene because this is not good for you. And come, let's go for a walk. You'll feel better. Let's get out of here. You know, it's not all doom and gloom. It's going to be okay. And getting them moving, getting them out and about will help. Next thing is to get, you know, really recommend that they get themselves some help. So there's different kinds of help that they can get. They can go to therapy, um, you know, in traditional psychotherapy, talk therapy, they're gonna rehash this thing over and over again. And some people love that and it's really good for them and some people don't do well with that at all um, because they can kind of wash themselves in the same dirty bath water over and over again and that isn't always helpful for everybody. So a program like our program, Emotional Freedom Program that we run is very effective for people that need to kind of get up, go, you know, get them, get their lives back on track. It's very practical, pragmatic, goal orientated. You know, so recommending that they book themselves a clarity call or a session with a therapist or get themselves some support. And, and like, yeah, there's no shame in that. No worries about, you know, um, getting support. Support's good. It's good that when we struggle with things to kind of get some help for ourselves. And then taking that first step, maybe going with them to that appointment can also really assist and help. But the key is for you, as somebody that is supporting somebody through this, there's only so far that you can go. You have to be careful because you're in that dynamic at the moment where you could fall into what we call the drama triangle. You're supporting this person, but then you drop into being the rescuer and they're the victim. And then they could end up really um, resenting you for that role later on. So checking in with them from time to time, like, hey, I'm here to help you, but only if you want the help. Like if you don't need the help, that's all good. You're gonna be fine, you're gonna be okay. So it's that coaching role, rather than just straight out rescuing role. Coaching role where it's like reminding them that they are capable, reminding them that they've got to get it back up. You know, this didn't happen to you, this happened for you for some reason. 
let's help get you moving and get you out of the space that you're in. So those are just a few tips that I wanted to give you in terms of supporting somebody through this. If you're really, really struggling, the person's in a really acute or dangerous spot, book a clarity call with somebody on my team. Um, we are experts in how to get over this kind of trauma and can really assist with some ideas and things that you can do to help your friend or loved one. All right, take care, bye.